So in the last video, we looked at a re reaction where we have A is converted into B at a certain rate constant. And in this case, I call it K1. But what if actually this reaction is not an irreversible reaction, as I've written it down. What if this reaction is actually a reversible reaction? What's happening here? So A is converted to B with a rate constant of K1 and B is converted into A with a rate constant and I denote this as K minus 1. So we have two reactions going on and we can actually write what's going on in a general rate law expression. So let's say we have dA over dt. Now, for the first part, we can easily do that. We can write uh, the uh, consumption of A minus k1 times A to the power of m. So that is actually here this forward reaction. So that's the forward reaction. Now, that is in one way. Now, we also need to look at the reverse reaction. And uh, so the reverse reaction, that is basically this one here. That's the reverse reaction. And how can we write that? Well, we produce A in this case. So plus, because we produce A, and A in this case depends on B, so plus K minus 1 times concentration of B to the power of, let's say, N. So this is now a slightly more complex rate law which takes into account that we have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. And we can put them together uh, just simply in this equation. So now the next question is, what happens if the forward reaction is exactly the same as the reverse reaction? What would we expect? Uh, just think about it for a moment. What happens if the forward reaction is exactly the same as the reverse reaction? What happened to dA over dt? What happens to the change in concentration per time unit of A? So, got it? If the forward reaction is the same as the reverse reaction, would we see a change in dA over dt? No, nothing would happen because it's a little bit like money goes out of the account and the same amount of money goes in. So there is no change in the account. So dt, dA over dt equals zero. Now, what does that mean? We can actually write this rate equation as 0 equals minus k1 times a to the power of m plus, plus k minus 1 times b to the power of n. What we can do now is... Um, we can say, actually, uh, let's bring uh, all the concentrations to one side. Or, or let's, let's, let's just simply bring this part here to this side. So we have K1 times A to the power of M equals K minus 1 times B to the power of M. N. Now we bring all the concentrations to one side, all the rate constants to the other side. 
and we get here k1 over k minus 1 equals b to the power of n divided by a to the power of m. And this is something that you've actually seen before. Let me just write it the right way around. Concentration of product to the power of n divided by concentration of the reactant to the power of m equals k1 over k minus 1. And that is the rate constant for the forward reaction. That is the rate constant for the reverse reaction. And this actually, you have seen that before, because this is generally known as the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant. And what does it mean? Well, an equilibrium just simply means that we have our forward reaction. Our forward reaction is exactly the same as the reverse reaction. This is the definition of an equilibrium. Some reactions move faster, some reactions move slower. So the general way to express, the equi uh, uh, e express this equation here is dA over dt with both of them, the forward and the reverse reaction taken into account. And yet, if we reach the equilibrium, then both parts, the forward reaction and the reverse reaction, are uh, exactly the same and cancel each other out. So the take-home message from that is when you have an equilibrium constant for a reaction, it is always the forward rate constant divided by the rate constant of the reverse reaction. So I hope this makes sense and uh, this is something that we will expand on in the next video.